Chapter 10 is about interactions and potential energy. We will be talking about potential energy, gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy, conservation of energy, energy diagrams, um, force and potential energy, and conservative and non-conservative forces. So if you remember from chapter nine, we talked about the basic energy model. And we know that energy is a scalar and it can be changed from one form to another. And so far we've talked about kinetic energy, potential energy, and we're gonna include thermal energy. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. And remember that we have to define a system. And so here in, in our system, we have kinetic energy and potential energy and thermal energy. And then the purple arrows represent work. So we can have energy in, um, or energy out, and we're gonna call that um, energy that either comes in or goes out of the system uh, external work. And so energy within a system can be transformed without loss. Um, it's conserved if the system is isolated. So if there's no work, then, um, then the energy is conserved. Uh, again, so the types of energy, energy we encountered so far are mechanical energy, which is kinetic energy and potential energy. So if we want to talk about kinetic energy, we, we think of that as the energy of motion, and K is equal to one-half mv squared, so the velocity is represented in the kinetic energy, and that's why it's called the energy of motion. Potential energy is energy from an interaction, and so we can talk about gravitational potential energy, and so the, our system is interacting with uh, the Earth, and so there's this gravitational potential energy, and the equation is given by mgy, we can also talk about elastic potential energy or spring energy, and that's equal to one half K delta X squared, where K is the spring constant and delta X is the distance the spring is compressed or stretched away from its equilibrium position when it's just sitting there and there's nothing pulling or, pull or pushing on it. Thermal energy, we're gonna represent with E um, TH. And so that's gonna be the heat or the microscopic motion of particles that's created from friction. For the conservation of energy, we have um, an equation that will represent with our change in the energy of our system. And we'll say that that change in the energy of our system is equal to delta K plus delta U plus the change in E thermal, and that's gonna equal the external work. Um, and we can rewrite our kinetic energy as K final minus K initial. We can rewrite our potential energy as U final minus U initial. Um, and that's really handy. So um, remember that our U can be either the gravitational potential energy or the spring potential energy. So we can rewrite those equations to be a little bit more intuitive. Um, so we have our kinetic energy initial plus our potential energy initial plus the external work is equal to our kinetic energy final plus our potential energy final plus the change in thermal energy. And we can use energy bar charts to help us to visualize how much energy is in each one of those. Uh, and we can look at um, the left side of the, of the equal sign has to equal the right side of the equal sign. And so these bars represent, oops, the bars represent the amount of energy. And so what we wanna do is add up the bars. So here we've got a one bar for the kinetic energy, the green one is kinetic, three bars for the blue one, which is potential, and then one bar for the external work, and that is below zero. So what we have is one, plus three minus one. So we've got three on the left-hand side. And then we have two bars for our kinetic energy final and one bar for our change in thermal. So when we add those up, one, two, plus three, we get three on the left-hand side and then three on the right-hand side. Now, if the system is isolated, then we have our external work term goes to zero right here. And so therefore we have kinetic energy plus potential energy initial is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy final plus our change in energy due to friction. And in this example, we have the block on an incline. And so our initial kinetic energy is zero because the block isn't moving yet. And our, we have our uh, kinetic or our potential energy is, the, is m times g times the height 
this height right here, this vertical height that the block, where the block is located. And then we can set that equal to what happens when the block reaches the bottom here. Um, we have our kinetic energy final, and we will have a term for that because we will have a vo velocity at the bottom. We'll have this um, term here will go to zero, and we will have a change in thermal energy because there is friction. And so we'll lose some of our potential energy that we started with. Some of it will go to kinetic energy, and some of it will go into thermal energy. And we can calculate that thermal energy by calculating the work like we learned about in chapter nine. And so the work of friction is just the force of friction times the, uh, the uh, length that the friction is applied, right? And the dot product shows us that we need the friction, the component of friction and the, um, the distance that it's applied there in the same direction. Now, if the system is isolated and frictionless, then we have no external work and we have no change in thermal energy. And so a good example of this might here might be this where we have a ball and we drop it from a certain height. And we can see um, when we first drop it, it's gonna have no kinetic energy. But when, um, when it reaches, say, right before it hits the floor, it'll have its maximum kinetic energy. And so what happens when our ball, but it, it has, when it starts out, it has all, all of its energy is in potential energy and it's not moving, so we were gonna have zero kinetic energy. But at the bottom, we'll have all kinetic energy and no potential energy. And so these arrows here show that um, at the starting height, our ball has its maximum potential energy, and at, its bot at the bottom, it has its minimum potential energy. And at the top, it has its minimum kinetic energy, but at the bottom, it's going the fastest, and it's gonna have its maximum kinetic energy. So remember that only the change in our in our potential energy, the delta UG is important. And so it doesn't matter where you place your coordinate system. So if you look at this example, Amber has her has um, located her rock is located at one meter on her scale. Uh, so it's starting out at one meter and it's it'll finish at zero meters, right? So it's the UG is 9.8 joules. Whereas Bill has the rock is starting out at zero meters and ending at negative one meter. Um, and so his starting potential energy is zero, whereas Amber's starting potential energy is 9.8. And we can see, we'll be able to tell if it matters um, where the, where the uh, coordinate system is. We can figure out if it matters or not from uh, the speed that the rock reaches at the bottom. So let's, um, see if we can work out that problem. So we can go over here and let's work through that. So we've got Bill and Amber and move that out of the way. And so we're gonna compute the speed of the rock uh, from Amber and Bill's perspective. So let's start with Amber. Amber. What we're going to use is our conservation of energy equation. So we're going to say um, K initial plus U initial is equal to K final plus U final. I don't have to worry about friction, so um, that's my equation. So I'll write the same thing for Bill. Bill is K initial plus U initial is equal to K final plus U final. Okay, so let's see. My K initial is 1 half MV initial squared plus mg y initial is equal to one half mv final squared plus mg y final. And so that's for Amber. So for Amber, she's starting at a zero velocity. So this term and this term goes to zero. And um, she is finishing with a y final of zero. So this is gonna be zero, and that means this is gonna be zero. So I've got, um, I'm looking for the final speed. So this is what I'm looking for here. So I can, since both of these terms are zero, oops, then I have, um, I can cancel my m's here. And so my v final, See, v final is squared is equal to, if I multiply both sides by two, I get two g y initial. And so then v final 
is equal to the square root of 2g y initial. And let's know, now work through bill. So bill is going to be 1 half mv initial squared plus mg y initial is equal to 1 half mv final squared plus mg y final. So we know that this term goes to zero because, um, and this goes to zero because it start the they're starting with the block at rest. Um, and for Bill, we see that for Bill, the initial position is zero, so this goes to zero. And um, and so if we we say we have zero is equal to one half m final squared plus m g y final, I can cancel out the m's. And I can bring um, at g y final over to the other side. So I'm going to have minus g y final is equal to one half g final squared. Um, so I can multiply by two. So I'm going to have a negative two g y final is equal to v final squared, or v final is equal to a negative two g y final square root. Okay, so now let's plug in the numbers that we have. So we have V final for amber is equal to two times 9.8 time meters per second squared times one meter, right? So she started here at one meter and that's the square root. And so for Bill, Bill is gonna be the same. V final is equal to a negative two, two times 9.8 meters per second squared times a negative one meters, right? Because um, the V final is here a negative one meter. So our, can our um, negatives cancel and we're gonna be multiplying the same thing here as we are here for Bill and Amber. So we know our velocities are gonna be the same without even calculating them. Okay, so going back to our slides. Okay, so our problem solving strategy for energy, um, the first thing after we draw a picture, our picture is going to include a before and after drawing, so before uh, our, think about our initial uh, conditions and then our final conditions. So we want to have a picture for both. Um, and then we want to um, add in energy bar charts. And so um, what we want to do is we want to have our energy bar charts. Our energy is on the left side of the equation, uh, initial energy, and our energy final is going to be on the right side. And if we think about a ball launched from the ground to the peak of its trajectory, so imagine I throw a ball up in the air, um, at the beginning, I'm going to have, this would be my kinetic energy here. So this is my kinetic energy. Um, since I'm starting from the ground, it has the ball has no potential energy, so I have zero potential energy. And that's going to equal, so these are my initial values for energy, and then it's going to equal, I have no, at the top, I have no kinetic energy, oops, no kinetic energy here at the top. It's not like in that. Here at the top, no kinetic energy, but all potential energy here. And I can see too that my um, number of bars, one, two, three, one, two, three for both. So that, that we wanna make sure that matches up. So we're really thinking about where the ener what happens to the en energy, where does it begin and then where does it end up in the end? So here's uh, an example of doing bar charts for multiple positions of the ball. So if my ball starts on the ground, right, it's launched right after it's launched from the ground. It has all kinetic energy um, about halfway. You know, it's rising and it's slowing down. So its kinetic energy is decreasing, but its potential energy is increasing because it's now has a Y value of more than zero. Here at the start, the Y value is zero. It's on the about on the ground, just leaving the ground. And here it has a, a height. When it reaches its highest point, its velocity is zero for an instant, and so therefore its kinetic energy is zero, and it has all potential energy. And notice that the potential energy here in, at the start match, right? As it come, starts to come back down, we have equal parts kinetic and potential energy, and then when the ball um, is finally just before it hits the ground, it's all kinetic energy and no potential energy. And notice, again, these three bars 
match. Okay, so if we want to find the maximum height of a pebble, so Bob throws a 20 gram pebble straight up with a speed of 25 meters per second, how high does the pebble go? So we're going to draw a picture and energy bar charts and then we'll solve. So we're going to sweep. And we'll go back to 10.1. So we've got Bob. We have a pebble. Uh, let's say the pebble has a mass. Just do a mass of 20 grams. And uh, the initial velocity is 25 meters per second. So we've got, let's draw our picture over here. Move that out of the way again. So here I've got my pebble, and it's launched here. So this is before, initial, I guess, and then after. I've got my pebble right here, so this is after. Okay, so... If I want to draw my energy bar charts, I'm going to draw a line here, and so I'm going to put an equal sign, and I'm going to have all kinetic energy at the start. So that's going to be my Ki. This is going to be my Ui, and there's going to be nothing here. And then here I'm going to have my K-final, and I'm going to have, this is going to be zero, and then my plus U-final, and this is going to be that tall. So these are about they look about equal okay so if i want to write my conservation of energy i'm going to have ki plus ui is equal to kf plus uf and um so this is going to be one half m the initial squared plus mg y initial is equal to one half m v final squared plus m g y final and so just looking at my bar charts, I know that my initial energy and potential energy is zero. And that's because my the pebble starts at a y height of zero right here. So I can say that that's zero and this is zero. And then after I have all potential energy, I can see from my energy bar charts. So and that's um, after is at the top at the peak, right? You know, the instant where the pebble is at its highest point. So the velocity at the top is zero, and my kinetic energy is zero. And so I am looking to see the height, the, um, the height the, that the pebble reaches. So I'm looking for y final here. And I can cancel my m's here. And um, so I'm going to say now I can divide both sides by g, so I can get y final alone. So y final is equal to v initial squared over 2, and then I'm, I divide it through by g, remember, so that, that's over g. So plugging in numbers, I get y final is equal to 25 meters per second that's squared divided by 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And then when I work through the math, I get that y final is equal to 32 meters. So that's my final answer. And I think after this, we go back to our slides. I think the next thing in the slides oops, let's see if I minimize this. Okay, so we've done our example, and I think that's the last slide. Okay.